Eating clean and going green makes sense. It's just a question of what to drink. Now we're here at Corny and Barrow with wine buyer Rebecca Palmer and we're going to taste a few wines. We are indeed. We're going to talk about organics and biodynamics. We have a lot of customers who are interested in organics and they also get a little bit worried about cost and the cost mm. implications of those choices. Mm. What do you think? Well, you know, without wishing to sound too self-righteous, um, there is a cost. There's a cost on the shelf, obviously, but there is a cost to the planet. Um, a recent biological conservation study suggested that, for example, insects are declining so fast that within, this, within a, a century, they could actually, some of them could become extinct. And that is down apparently to intensive agriculture and the use of pesticides. There's also so I suppose a cost to your health uh, as a drinker. Um, uh, a recent study uh, said found traces of glyphosate, which is a weed killer, uh, in 19 out of the 20 scary. top wine and beer drinks that they tested. That is scary. Mm. So, you know, tell us a little bit about organics, organic wines. Well, I mean, organics definitely promotes biodiversity mm -hmm. and it rejects the use of synthetic pesticides, uh, herbicides, fungicides and GM products. That, that doesn't mean that organic producers don't treat their, their vines. The, the vineyards you know, are a precarious uh, entity with a very sort of delicate crop so they do need treating. It's just that organic farmers use natural alternatives. Now those natural alternatives aren't a panacea in themselves either. They, there can be issues associated with them. They also, for example, aren't as effective in some instances. So they have to be applied more, which means the tractors go out to the vineyards more, which means more carbon emissions, for example. Yeah, I see what you mean. So how about biodynamics? How does, it, how does that stack up? Well, I mean, it, biodynamics in, in many ways, not in every way, but in many ways is an extension, if you like, of organics. Mm. Um, it incorporates the principles of Rudolf Steiner, um, the use of the lunar calendar, homeopathic treatments, and actually um, the use of animals is absolutely integral to a biodynamic farm. Mm. Uh, it's easy to be sceptical about biodynamics, but it's worth remembering that some of the greatest wines in the world are made using biodynamic principles. And, and frankly, whether it's organics or biodynamics, both systems tend to encourage wine growers to get into their vineyard. And that's usually a good thing. Mm. Do you know, I remember when I was first in the trade, you know, about 20 years ago, that when we tasted organic wines, they were often a little bit like, um, iffy, that's a technical term, <laughs> and, you know, a little bit unclean or whatever. And, and my feeling is that that's very much transformed today. You know, even probably five or six years ago, it was still there was a lot of slightly strange, funky smells and, and tastes mm. around, which you just don't tend to get in the same way anymore. Mm. And there's some people who've been organic or biodynamic since, since whenever, and they make wonderful wines. It's about understanding your vineyards. It's about getting the best out of them and trying your best to minimise your impact on, on the planet. Yeah, and certainly we're seeing with a number of our producers uh, even more interest than before. You know, a lot of people in conversion and so forth. But all these, all these producers and um, uh, wines we have here today are actually fully organic or biodynamic as well. And should we taste the first mm, one? Yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah okay. let's go. You can pour that one. I've got okay. some already. Thank you. I mean, so I think also when we when we think about um, drinking organic wine, you know, it's not necessarily going to taste better. We can't guarantee that it will. It depends how good the producer is. Yeah, but sure. if we had a choice of of two wines, that one was organic or biodynamic and one was conventionally farmed, they both taste mm. equally good. I think probably all of us would say. I'd happily drink, I'd more happily drink the, the yeah. organic wine, just for your own health mm. and well-being, really. Mm. Mm. But, I mean, that's delicious, a classic Sancerre, but it's got a real energy to it, absolutely beautiful. Now that is a really nice glass mm. of Sancerre, isn't it? There's this concentration to it that you often really don't get, mm. and mm. you assume that must be from the, the kind of farming principles and the, the, the ripeness of the grapes that they're getting. Mm. But I think it's not easy to go organic and biodynamic everywhere. <laughs> but vine health, you know, farming systems to promote health of crops is, is super important. We want vines to be there for a long time, to be healthy. It's often that old vines tend to give more interesting wines. And actually, some vines don't get to that ripe old age because they're not farmed in a proper way. Mm, or they're certainly not farmed in a way true. which is going to promote longevity. So it's great to see practices which do focus on that and promote it so that you can get these old wines which give wonderful wines. Yeah, for sure. And certainly, you know, a lot of Burgundian producers mm. are, are following those practices. Yeah. This is actually a Burgundy, the next wine we so have. We've got a wine from Burgundy here, um, which you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell from the label, which is no, quite funky. it is funky. Quite different to... And Burgundy is not the easiest Burgundy. place in the world to be 
organic or biodynamic, is no, it? You know, it's much easier if you're in Chile where the sun shines, it's warm, there's not as much rain. And, um, you know, mm. it's far tougher in, in old world countries that have a more sort of unpredictable climate. But mm. also there's a scale issue, isn't there? I think it's easier to be organic and biodynamic the smaller the unit, isn't it? Because there's mm. just fewer vines and you can tend them a bit, a bit better. Um, but this one's a quite a special rendition of Burgundy, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a Bourgogne Pastou Gras. Pastou Gras means in mm. French, um, you know, all the berries go in, basically. Mm. Um, and this is a, a, a mix of Gamay and, and, and Pinot Noir, local grapes. And I think the result is quite, um, you know, juicy, mm. fresh. It's got a hint of leafiness. It's got the leafiness that you'd mm. love from, from Burgundy and that slightly savoury old world character. Mm. But at the same time, really juicy and fresh and, and, and light bodied. You know, it's not, it's not a heavy wine. It's um, really easy drinking. 2014 vintage, isn't it? And it's classic and fresh and got a bit of age to it, but it's, it's really juicy and delicious. I mean, I think what we all want in our wines, we want character, mm. but not character that takes it so far that it's actually quite challenging to drink. Um, I love a wine that's got its own personality. Um, it's a fine line, though. <laughs> we want our wines to be delicious. We demand them to be delicious, don't we? And good for the planet, if they can. Without muddying the waters at all. Oh. Um, so this wine is from Muddy Water, a producer in the Waipara in New Zealand. Mm. And this estate has been um, organic and practicing biodynamics for some time now. Um, they are producers of, of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And this is a, a, a recent vintage from the estate. Mm. And we, we obviously, we talked about organic and biodynamic all around the world where, where it's happening. I mean, what's good to see is some figures as well suggesting that these, what this, these categories are in growth, certainly organic. Um, it's estimated that around 4 to 5% of the world's vineyard, the world's whole wine vineyard, is, is organic. And the growth of organic wine versus conventional wine, organic wines outpacing conventional by about 10 to 1 in some markets. So it's, wow. it's really growing. It's a, a category for the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more vineyard around the world, uh, especially in the new world, going, mm. going organic. Certainly, New Zealand are trailblazers in terms of, you know, developing sustainable approaches and and really um, taking those on board and mm. pushing those. So mm. I'm, I'm sure that you're right, and that the new world will, you know, really be pushing this forward. Yeah, I hope so. It's nice to see it wherever it happens all around the world. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Good Wonderful. stuff. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.